everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are taking a look at the big one, both figuratively and literally. We are of course going to be taking a look at PMDG's 777. PMDG were kind enough to reach out asking whether or not I would like to take a look at the 300ER. Of course I was only too happy to do so given that I know many of you have been looking forward to the jet and PMDG's efforts rarely disappoint. So today's video will be a full showcase and review of the add-on. As usual, we'll be running through a full flight and demonstrating some features of the product as we go. For our flight today, we are currently on the ground at New York's John F. Kennedy Airport, and we're going to be operating a return service back towards London Heathrow as Speedbird 178. It should hopefully be a really fun flight. We're going to be departing off JFK's runway 31 left by the Kennedy 5 departure using the Kanazi climb procedure. Later on, the forecast into London pretty poor, so some heavy bands of rain Certainly the potential for some low visibility conditions on the approach. On the jet we have almost a full load of passengers, some 360 people on board, and a little bit of cargo as well. The flight time just over 6 hours, we have a nice tailwind as well pushing us back over the Atlantic. We'll initially be cruising at flight level 350, and those mighty General Electric G90 engines are going to be burning their way through around 45 tonnes of Jet A during the flight. I'm very much looking forward to the flight and seeing what the PMDG 777 has to offer within the sim. I certainly hope that you are as well. As always, if you do enjoy the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. And if you would like to help support the channel further, you can do so by becoming a channel member or patron. So this morning then we find ourselves in the cockpit of PMDG's mighty 777. As discussed, we're currently on stand 8 here at New York's John F. Kennedy Airport, and as you can see, currently boarding the passengers here through the L2 exit. We've also got the cargo and the bags currently coming on board the jet. With that in mind, we'll run straight into the pre-flight checks, although rest assured we will be taking a further look here at the cockpit throughout the flight. It's also worth noting we've already got the jet electrically powered, so the battery master switch lets it on, the APU is running, and that's providing electrical power and bleed air to the aircraft. I've just done that ahead of time since both the APU and the avionics of the 777 do take quite some time to initialise. So for the pre-flight checks, the part brake is set, battery master switch is selected on, primary flight computers are set through to auto and guarded. Thrust asymmetry compensation is set through to auto, APU generator switch is selected on, the IFE and cabin utility power switch is both selected on. Oh, for you, thank you. Left and right bus tie switches both set through to auto. Left and right main generator switches both set through to on, and same there as well for the backup generators. Nav lights set on, exterior lights are set, cockpit lights are set as required. The emergency exit lights are armed and guarded. Left and right pack control switches both set through to auto, and the addery switch is selected on. So we can now come down to the FMC and initialize the IRS. On the IDEP page we are a 777-300, we do have the GE90 engines installed, producing a pretty phenomenal 115,000 pounds of thrust. In terms of our nav data we are currently slightly out of date, April 3 to May of 24. That'll be good enough though for the purposes of our flight. So we'll come on to the POSINIT, just waiting here for the IRSs to initialise. We are going to be aligning based off the GPS position, so we'll select that and enter that into the set inertial position field the IRSs should now be aligning. For the cockpit preparation checks, the window heats are selected on. For the hydraulics, the primary left and right engine driven pumps are selected on. Primary C1 and C2 elect pumps are selected off. And the left, centre 1, centre 2 and right demand pumps are selected off. No smoking sign set through to auto, the passenger signs can come on. We've actually already got the jet fueled up. As you can see, 56.6 
Tons of fuel on board the aircraft. Evenly balanced, 28.3 tons is in both the left and the right. Nothing there in the centre tank. And the APU currently feeding from the left via the forward main pump. You got the 409, you copy the RVR. So seatbelt signs are on, EEC mode switches are set through to normal and guarded. Engine start switches are set through to normal, auto start switch is selected on. Once again, the left forward fuel pump selected on for the APU. Anti ice set through to auto, equipment cooling set through to auto. Gasper fans and reset fans selected on. Light deck temperature control set through to auto, the cabin temperature control set through to the 12 o'clock position. Left and right pack control switches set through to auto, trim airs both selected on. The left center and right isolation valve set through to auto. And for the bleeds we've got the bleeds for the engine selected on, APU bleed selected through to auto. Lastly here as well for the pressurization, that is set through to auto. We've already received the ATIS, so just running through, as you can see, we've already made a takeoff performance calculation. Kennedy, runway 31 left. In terms of the weather, the wind 320 at 14 knots. Outside air temperature currently 14 degrees. And QNH 1031, that translates to a QNH here in the States of 30.45 inches. In terms of that takeoff data, then, it's going to be a flaps 5 takeoff, linking at a takeoff 2 D rate, selected temperature of 40 degrees. Trim's going to be around 4.69 units. We've got our V speeds calculated, but we'll take the speeds as they're given to us via the FMC. So coming down to the FMC, we'll actually just keep the nav display in sight here as well. That'll come into relevance later on. Hopefully you can still see what we're doing here down on the unit itself. So of course we've already initialized the IRSs. We'll come through to the route page. Again, we're going to be departing out of John F. Kennedy. So Kilo, Juliet, Foxtrot, Kilo. And bound for London Heathrow, which is Echo Golf Lima Lima. Departing as discussed, expecting runway 31 left. And in terms of the flight number today, it's going to be Speedbird, so Bravo Alpha Whiskey 178. Yeah, say it again, please, up 409. We can activate that, we'll execute, we'll come onto the departures page. That should already be pre selected. Again, 31 left, going to be the Kennedy 5 departure. Back onto the route page, onto the next page, the Kennedy 5, as you can see, takes us out towards the Canazi VOR. From Canazi, we're going to be tracking to Waypoint Betty, Bravo, Echo, Tango, Tango, Echo. Then direct to the Alpha, Charlie, Kilo VOR. Then direct towards Waypoint Tusky, Tango, Uniform, Sierra, Kilo, Yankee. And then picking up the November 261 Alpha, Airway out towards Waypoint GP, Juliet, Oscar, Oscar, Papa Yankee. From there, we're going to be picking up our NAT track, so we've got a few lats and longs to enter. We'll try and do that as quickly as possible, so it's going to be north 49 west 050. Next will be north 51 and west 040. Then north 53, west 030, and lastly north 54, and west 020. So we'll just briefly check those again. We've got 4950, 5140, 5330, and 5420, that is correct. After our NAT track, we're going to be exiting via waypoint Bexit, so Bravo, Echo, X ray. Echo Tango. And then it'll be direct towards Waypoint Botham, Bravo, Oscar, Boxtrot, Uniform, Mike. We'll then be picking up the Quebec 37 airway. Onto the Quebec 38 airway. And then it'll be Waypoint Nugra. November Uniform Golf Romeo Alpha. We'll activate all of that. Again, hit Execute. And at the moment, with the current weather conditions into Heathrow later on, we're expecting the RLS 27 right. From Nugra, it's going to be the Nugra 1 hotel arrival. And coming in via the Bovingdon VOR, so we'll select all of that. That's it in terms of the routing. We'll discuss the departure in just a moment's time. The performance in it, the zero fuel weight at the moment is 205.6 tonnes. Alright, so that maintains 4,299.3.409.
Reserve fuel for the flight today is 5.9 tonnes. Gatwick's the alternate. Initial cruise flight level 350. And cost index for the flight is going to be 137. Min fuel temperature. Jet A, I believe, out of the state, so I believe the freezing temp for that is 40 degrees. We'll leave the field there at minus 37. For the thrust limit, as we saw, it's going to be a takeoff 2 D rate. Same, we'll leave the climb 2 D rate. And selection temperature 40 degrees. For the takeoff itself, again, it's going to be a flaps 5 departure. And the takeoff CFG is 30.0. That's giving us a takeoff stab trim of 4.75. In terms of the V speeds, V1 161, VR 164, V2 169. So that's it in terms of the FMC setup. We do have Navigraph chart functionality integrated into the onboard tablet. We'll take a look at that later on during the arrival into Heathrow. For now, we're just going to brief off the paper chart so that you can see here the setup as well for the departure. So again, it's going to be the Kennedy 5 departure coded as the JFK 5 departure here in the box. Plate 20-3 Bravo, it's a conventional SID. Again, we're off runway 31 left, it's going to be the Kanazi climb that we're following here today. So that's going to be a climbing left turn direct to the Kanazi VOR. We need to make sure we make that turn inside of the 039 radial, so remaining within 4.5 miles from JFK. We're then going to be tracking outbound from the station on the 176 radial. And making sure here as well that we cross 2 miles out from Kanazi at or above 2,500 feet. Initial stop height for the departure is 5,000. We'll keep the speed back here as well to help with the turn. We'll obviously talk through that as we go. In terms of the terrain, there's nothing significant here around JFK. The MSA 2900. Ultimately, we're going to be tracking out over the water. In terms of the weather, generally very nice. Certainly plenty good enough for us to return to JFK, should we so need to. Just before we finish the setup here as well, we'll discuss the taxi. So nice and easy for us here today. We're currently on stand 8. We're going to be pushing back into the main apron. We'll then exit via November Charlie, coming down Alpha, and just following Alpha all the way down to holding point Zulu for runway 31 left. Lastly then, in terms of that setup for the departure itself, just going to set things up here in the fixed page as I might on the Airbus. I don't know how applicable that is to the 777. So we'll come down to the fixed page. We'll select the Kanazi VOR, which is Kilo Romeo India. As discussed, we want to make the turn here inside of the 039 radial, so we'll select that. Delta 1340, that traffic will stay off your right side. And then again, as I mentioned, we're going to be tracking outbound on the 176 radial. And as before, we need to make sure we're above 2500 feet, within two miles from the station. So as you can see, we're going to be departing out towards the northwest, off runway 31 left. We need to turn inside the radial, so again we'll keep the speed back and then pick up the 176 radial outbound from Kanazi. That's about it then in terms of our initial setup, passengers still boarding here at the moment. As usual we'll take the opportunity to take a quick walk through the cabin, take a look at what PMDG have done with the texturing and the modelling there. After that we'll continue on with our cockpit preparations and I'll come back to you again just ahead of the push and start. Life jackets for children. 
in the unlikely event of the aircraft having to make an emergency landing, you'll be told to take this protective brace position. We will now explain how to leave the aircraft in an emergency. Move quickly to the closest usable. Okay, so we now have everybody on board the aircraft. As you can see, we have the doors closed up. The ground equipment has been removed. Well, the last of our setup items on the MCP, we've got a V2 of 169, pre-selected heading there of 240, and stop height there of 5,000 feet. Just gone with heading hold initially, that way we can track out on runway heading, and then easily hit heading select to preempt the turn. As you can see, 240 takes us inbound towards Kanazi. Flight directors are selected on, auto throttles are armed, we've got heading hold and toga there on the FMA, and again, not selecting LNAV or VNAV for the time being, that way we can fly the heading and keep the speed back initially during the turn. Auto brake set through to RTO, comm and audio panels are set. Transponder will set on here ahead of the start. Rudder and aileron trims are neutral, the takeoff briefing is complete. The pre-flight checklist, oxygen is checked, flight instruments, we've got a heading of 163 on both the PFD and the nav display on my side. Same on the first officer's side and same there on the standby compass. Altimeters 3045 on all three altimeters, and that's giving us an aerodrome elevation of 20 feet across the board. That's the pre-flight checklist complete for the before-start flow. Doors are closed, the ground equipment has been disconnected. For the hydraulics, the right elect demand pump is set through to auto. C1 and C2 primary elect pumps are selected on. Left elect demand pump selected through to auto, and finally C1 and C2 Air pumps selected through to auto. For the fuel pumps, we'll take the left main and the right mains on. And again, we can leave the centre tank pumps off with no fuel in the centre tank. Passenger signs are on. The transponder is selected on. Beacon is on. In terms of the recall, we've got engine shutdown and TCAS off. We're expecting to see both of those, so we'll cancel that for now. And we can run through the before start checklist. So the flight deck door is closed and locked. Nice to see now that has been animated on the 777 as opposed to the 737. MCP, we have V2169 heading of 240, 5000 feet. Takeoff speeds, we have V1161, VR164, V2169. CDU pre-flight is complete. For the trims, we have 0, 0, and we have hydraulic power now, so we'll set 4.75 here on the stab trim. Delta 409, contact final 125.7. Taxi and takeoff briefing is complete. That is the before start checklist complete. We'll bring up the engine page here on the secondary display. And the tug should be just moving into position now, so we'll just wait on him here before we commence the start. The part brake is off. And away we go. So starting number one. I'll try and keep fairly quiet here during the startup process so that you can hear the engine sounds in their entirety. PMDG have done a really nice job of capturing the sound of the G90. So we do have rotation there on the N2, all pressure coming up, we'll just went till we're through 30%. We'll introduce the fuel. There's our 30%, so fuel on. Okay, so we have a good start there on engine one. We'll start engine two. We're also good now in terms of the push. So we'll stop the truck, have him disconnect. We'll take the part brake on. Again, N2 rotation, all pressure coming up. 
Uh, the heading after Lundy is heading 180, and information help tell is current for the Alice runway 22 left approach. There's our 30%, so fuel on. There goes the tug. And there's our light off. So just waiting now for the number two to stabilize. The ground equipment is clear. JetBlue 1518, the RVR for runway 22 left, touchdown 1400, midpoint 800, rollout 600. And we do have two good starts. The before taxi checks then, the engine generators are both selected on, APU selector is off, engine start selectors are both set through to normal, left and right pack control. Switches are both set through to auto. We should see lights out. Those will extinguish momentarily. The left centre and right isolation valve set through to auto. Engine bleeds are selected on. The flaps will come through to flaps 5 as per our takeoff performance calculation. So flaps 5 selected. Just waiting on that to be indicated. Stab trim we have 4.75 units again as per our CFG. The flight controls Come onto the flight control page, we have pull up, pull down, and neutral, pull left, pull right, and neutral, and on the rudder, pull left, pull right, and neutral. So flight control is good, bring up the checklist here. In terms of the recall, just the TCAS will take that out of the runway. Anti-ice is set through to auto, we'll take the runway turn off and the taxi light on. The before taxi checks, anti-ice set through to auto, recall has been checked. Flight controls are checked, the ground equipment, once again the tug is now clear, we're clear on the right and clear on the left. That is the before taxi checks complete. We'll get rid of the lower display for the time being. And once more, in terms of the taxi, we've just pushed back here onto November Charlie, we're going to come out onto Alpha, and then we'll take Alpha all the way down to Honey Point Zulu, or runway 31 left. Our brake can come off, to do that we just depress the brake pedals. One issue I have had with the aircraft currently, I can't seem to use a hardware key binding to operate the part brake. Just coming up on the throttles, get the aircraft rolling. We are fairly heavy here today, so not entirely implausible that we need a little bit of thrust just to get the aircraft moving. JetBlue 1518, descend and maintain 16,000, altimeter 2993. And 16,000, 2993, JetBlue 1518. So again, straight ahead on to November Charlie, first left on to Taxiway Alpha. All the way down Alpha, which leads into Juliet, and then Holding Point Zulu, runway 31 left. American 816, continue taxi, Charlie, and echo the Delta Bravo. Yeah, we need a few minutes, we just want to get in the way. Do you want us to go somewhere? We need about four minutes. Okay, American 816, taxi, left, Delta Bravo, Fox Bravo, hold short of an echo. Delta Bravo, Fox, Bravo, short of echo, American 9. Okay, so we are now lined up here on runway 31. In terms of our takeoff items, we've got a V1 of 161, VR of 164, V2 of 169. The landing lights are selected on, same as well for the strobes. Transponder is set through to TARA, we've got traffic selected now on the nav display. We've also taken on the weather radar, which seems to function to some degree in the aircraft, which is really great. Not too many study level jets in the sim actually have an operable weather radar. We'll set the clock through to run. And for the takeoff itself, we'll come through to 50% here on the M1s. Allow the engines to stabilise. And take off. So hitting the toga switches, a little bit of a hidden click spot there on the MCP. We have thrust ref heading hold toga on the FMA. 80 knots. 
There's 80 knots, throttle hold. Up through 100 knots. And the 777 here barreling down the runway. Nice and easy on the rudders. Let's rotate, so back on the yoke. A little bit heavy there in pitch. Positive rate of climb. Okay, we do have a positive rate. We'll bring up the gear. Up through 500 feet now, so we'll go heading select and take the autopilot. Again, that's going to start the turn, keeping that speed back at just below 190 knots currently. We'll hold that until we've completed the turn. As you can see, that's keeping us nicely inside the radial, which is exactly what we had planned. Up through 1500 feet. We'll just wait until we've almost completed the turn. Looking good now, we'll come into VNAV. So we've got thrust reference, VNAV speed, accelerating out towards 240 knots, tracking inbound towards Kanazi. Everything working out quite nicely. We'll hold the after takeoff checks until we're outbound from Kanazi. We'll go flaps 1. Right, it's 2330, the traffic's now uh, 10 o'clock and 1-2 uh, miles southeast bound there, both day 320, climbing at a 4,900. And looking good there now on the speed, we'll go flaps 0. Take the runway turn off lights and the taxi light off. Just coming overhead the Floyd Bennett Field. Decommissioned now, I believe. And we'll just preempt the turn through Canarsie here slightly, about a mile out, that's looking pretty good. We'll start bringing the heading around. Up now towards 250 knots. The after takeoff checklist. Gear is up, flaps are up, auto brake is off. Taxi lights and runway turn off lights are off. And just getting ready here to level off 5,000. So we've got speed, VNAV out. So again, we'll just track outbound on the radial. We can run through the after takeoff checklist here as well. Landing gear up, flaps are up. That is the after takeoff checklist complete. And we'll assume now we're tracking away from Kanazi, so we'll assume we've been given direct to Waypoint Betty. So we'll just select that, put that again on the top line, that's now drawing a nav track for us out towards Waypoint Betty. So we'll execute, we'll come into El Nav. And the aircraft will now commence the left hand turn. Take us in towards the waypoint. Just centre up that heading bug. And we'll assume now we've been given further climb up to flight level 150. There's 150. We have thrust reference, VNAV speed, maintaining 250 knots, the thrust coming up once again. And you can see there, waypoint Betty, 40 miles out, we've got traffic 2,000 foot below, out at around 30 miles, and about 1,200 feet below us descending, out at around 10 miles. A little bit tricky to make out any traffic at the moment with the sun somewhat in our eyes. So Betty, 37 miles out, just coming up through 5,000 feet. Weather looks pretty decent overall, so we'll cycle the signs for the cabin crew. Yeah, blue 1518, descend and maintain 13,000. Once we come up through 10,000, of course, we'll take the landing lights off. And in the US, so holding the altimeters here till we're up through 18,000 feet. In terms of the climb out checks, the autopilot is set. We've got LNAV, VNAV. 
Interestingly, the aircraft looks as though it's dropped the climb D rate there. We'll just go to climb two. Save the engines. So climb two. We were getting around three and a half thousand feet per minute on the range of climb. That will obviously start to reduce now. Looking at a target and one there of around 88%. Not quite sure why it dropped things there. I was using a save state, so I assume the save state didn't capture the D-rate settings. Anyway, just approaching 10,000, we'll take the landing lights off. American 23, 38, final, 125.7. Might just take the dome light on here as well, it's a little bit dark inside. And we'll take the storm lights on, brighten things up a little bit. So, less than 40 miles now to run towards Betty. Tracking down the coast, accelerating up towards 320 knots. 125.7, American 2338. Up through 10,000, again the landing lights are off. We'll just leave the passengers sat down slightly longer. And as you can see, leaving New York behind, initially tracking up the coastline, but obviously heading eastbound out into the Atlantic. Looks as though we've got traffic down below us there at our 10 o'clock. Visual with him. Anyway, a fun little departure there off runway 31 left. I hope you enjoyed that with the Kanazi climb. Just continuing now in the climb up to initially 15,000 feet. Ultimately, as I say, our initial cruise altitude will be flight level 350. We've got some step climbs along the way. We should be cruising at around Mach 0.84. The progress page has us arriving currently into Heathrow with around 8 tonnes. Again, the reserve fuel around 6 tonnes, so only about an extra 20 minutes on top of that. A little bit less than I planned. We'll see how we go though once we get that step climb in. Always a little bit tricky trying to manage these things in Microsoft Flight Simulator where the winds are aloft and the temperatures aloft not always that accurate. As usual, en route we'll tick off a few more items throughout the review, so we're going to be taking a look at some of the external modelling, as well as some of the internal modelling. And as well, once we're established up at flight level 350, we'll run through the tablet and the various functionality associated with that. For now though, you can just sit back, relax and enjoy the PMDG 777. Okay, check the seat cab on course, and we'd like to stop the climb to level 210 on course, 3216. 143316, stop Left 7,000 through 3,000, direct watch from on course, Oscar 1531. Both through 109, 312, descend to 290. Swift 109, Vancouver Center, Roger, Abbotsford Davis, Bravo, descend 11,000, Hope Altimeter, 2, correction 3010, but that is more than an hour old. Vancouver Center, good morning, Oscar 1531, 4,000, cleared 7,000, direct watch from. Pasco 1531, Vancouver Center, good morning, climb at level 210. Okay, so we are now established up at flight level 370, having made our step climb earlier on. That's giving us a nice tailwind, although that tailwind is now falling off. We've got about 40 knots off the tail currently. We had up to around 115 knots earlier on in the flight. Still getting a good ground speed though, 530 knots over the ground. And that's improved our fuel state on arrival now into Heathrow, showing about 9.5 tonnes. So about an extra 35 minutes on top of what we need. As you can see, we do have a few other aircraft in the area, one just out to the south of us currently. And about 3 hours and 20 minutes now into the flight, so pretty much halfway in terms of our block time. As well geographically, we zoom out here on the chart. You can see we are pretty much equidistant between the eastern coastline of the United States and the western coastline of the United Kingdom. So I thought this would be a pretty good juncture in the flight to take a look at the onboard tablet. It is worth noting that the PMDG tablet is somewhat simplistic in terms of the functionality available, at least compared to some of the competition. That being said, all of the functionality that you'll need for a typical flight is there, so it's really just the more superfluous functions that are missing. We'll come back to the home page initially. You can see only three tabs available to us. So firstly we'll look at the electronic flight bag. 
Starting with the en route chart, we have the ability to display both in a night and a day mode. We can also minimise the screen, zoom in and out. I will say that the granularity on the zoom is perhaps not quite there. You can see we are now quite zoomed in. The only other option there doesn't really display our route in an optimal way. Nevertheless, the chart works perfectly well. We can also lock our present position, display an altitude profile, and switch between the PMDG charting and the Navigraph charting. Only, of course, if you have a Navigraph subscription. The tablet does allow SimBrief integration, although I haven't linked that up with my particular version of the aircraft. I have, though, as you've seen, linked up my Navigraph charts, and for anybody that's not aware, this is a payware subscription. The tablet does pick up any data entered into the FMC, which is really nice. So it's picked up my route, it's automatically therefore given me departure and arrival airfields. So I've just been looking through the arrival here for 27 right at Heathrow. The same as well with the routing, that's just picked up what we put in the flight plan. But again, you can feed it data from Simbrief, should you so wish. In terms of the settings, again, all fairly typical. We have tablet brightness, we can adjust that. We can set our Simbrief alias as well as our Hoppy ID. We can choose the weather source for the tablet, so either the sim weather or the real world weather. That's a nice feature because if you're not flying, of course, with real weather in the sim, then bringing in real world weather to the tablet is not of all that much use. I will say though, it seemed earlier on with my takeoff performance calculation that initially the tablet still brought in the real world weather. We can have an on-screen keyboard, however, you can also use your hardware keyboard as long as you pre-select the line that you're looking to enter the data into. We can choose different themes for the tablet, and we can also choose different units for display for distance, altitude, speed, pressure, weight, things of that nature. We can also sign out of Navigraph and reset the tablet back to its factory settings. For the performance tool, we've already seen the takeoff data calculation. You can also carry out a dispatch and en route landing calculation. So whilst we're here, we might as well calculate our landing performance into Heathrow later on, at least as a preliminary calculation. Already pre-selected Heathrow, runway 27 right, you can see that's auto-populated the elevation, runway heading, slope. Length available is 11,798 feet. And I've just gone with good for the runway condition, we are expecting rain later on this evening in London. For the aircraft again, you can auto-populate the fields by importing the aircraft details, that will give us our estimated landing weight. Going to be a flaps 25 config for the landing, we'll leave the air conditioning on. Anti-ice is auto, reversers will leave no credits, auto brake, go with auto brake 2. There's no normal conditions currently and for the V-Ref we'll just add 5 knots to that. Again we can import the weather but currently that's not going to be of much use to us so we'll enter that manually. In terms of the wind we're looking at 270 degrees, 26 knots, so pretty windy in London. Temperature of 16 degrees. And the QNH is currently 1009. With all of that entered, we can just hit calculate. And you can see we have a estimated landing weight there of 215 tons. VREF is going to be 151 knots. Required landing distance 7,745 feet. And again, available we have 11,798. So plenty of performance margin there for the landing later on. And again, we can adjust those figures closer to our arrival this evening. The last page of the tablet is for ground operations, and again, most of the functionality here as you would expect. We can set up various ground equipment, so wheel chocks, air start car, ground power. We can request jetway connection. We can also choose the ground power type and the passenger entry method. For the ground vehicles, as you'll have seen during the intro shot there, we have various ground vehicles available, as with the PMDG 737. Those are custom, they're modelled pretty nicely, and they're a really nice feature to have on the aircraft. So for example, we have cargo loaders, a fuel truck, catering, maintenance van, air stairs as well, should we say wish, lavatory service, potable water. As you can see, plenty of options available in terms of ground equipment. We can also actuate the aircraft doors via the tablet, which is a little bit less clunky than using the CDU, so that's a nice feature to have as well. Automated ground ops basically gives you an automated turnaround, so rather than having to manually select the doors, the fuel, things of that nature, the process will be run through automatically, a little bit more realistic in that respect. And lastly, in terms of ground maintenance, we can carry out basic maintenance tasks on the aircraft, so refilling the hydraulic fluids, engine oils, fire bottles. We can also service various aircraft systems. 
and replace tyres, brakes and cool the brakes as well. But as I say, overall the tablet perhaps just a little bit less complex than certain other aircraft available in the sim. But once more, I think all of the functionality that you would need and certainly all of the functionality that I would typically use on a real world flight is there more or less. Decent features and a really nice addition to the aircraft. Uh, we're flat out at the moment, it's showing an ETA SOMAX of 1125 and about 20 seconds. Virgin 165 standard, Roger, that's copy. I'm going to speak to Shamak here because yeah, radar showing you there at uh, 1126. I'm going to speak to Shamak to see if there's any leeway in that restriction. Sure, we're showing 1125 and 10 seconds at the moment. I'll be careful. Uh, zero 06 right now, CTVLC level 350, yeah, uh, 2251. Air France 069 or Shannon, good morning, identify to SOMAX and then Gapley. SOMAX and then Gapley, Air France 069. Shannon, hello, United 15, flight level 320. United 15, Shannon, good day, identify. 723, go ahead. Your traffic ahead has lost some time, so change your restriction at Smallis 1135 or later now, please. Okay, very good, 723. Sir, would it be possible to uh, take a different altitude to increase our airspace? It may be, sir. What level are you looking for? We could do a 39 or 400. Chris has copied. I'll put it to Shaming. I'll call you. I'll get back to you in one minute. So, once again, welcome back to the flight deck. We are still maintaining flight level 370 currently. However, we're just coming over waypoint Nugra and now approaching our top descent. We've got about eight miles to run. As you can see, we have an FMC message reset MCP altitude. So, we'll clear that. And we'll set our MCP altitude. We're going to go straight down to 2,500 feet. We'll talk more about that during the briefing. So that's 3,000. AZ 6441 London, good afternoon, route director Sitek. And 2,500. The aircraft will automatically commence the descent once we hit that top of descent point. In the meantime, we'll get everything set up. We'll brief as well here for the arrival. First things first, we'll just center out that heading bug once again. As you can see, we're going to have quite a bit of weather to contend with here during the approach. Break to sit at 6441. So as far as the briefing goes, coming back down to the tablet, you can see we entered the UK coastline just out to the north of Wales. We're now tracking down south below Manchester and Liverpool. Just coming overhead to Stoke-on-Trent, then we'll be tracking overhead Birmingham, Oxford, and into London for Heathrow's 27 rights. Again, just coming over waypoint Nugra, so we're now on the Star, the Nugra One Hotel, as we discussed earlier on this morning in JFK. Let's play 10-2 Alpha 2, it's an RNAV star. Initially that's going to bring us over Nugra, over the Honley VOR. Waypoint Tobid, we need to be at flight level 200. Waypoint Sopit, flight level 150. And then over the Bovingdon VOR, flight level 70 at 220 knots. Again, we're going to descend straight down to 2500, let the aircraft manage everything with VNAV as much as we can. That's always a good little test of an add-on. I have to say, so far I've flown a couple of approaches, a couple of arrivals with the PMDG 777, and it's been pretty flawless in terms of its VNAV. So that takes us on to plate 10-2 Quebec, from Bovingdon, tracking out above 6,000 feet, 15 miles from the station, back towards 180 knots, and a right turn around the corner, initially down to 3,000, ultimately down to 2,500 feet, to intercept the ILS. So as discussed, we've set 2500, hopefully the aircraft's going to manage all of that with minimal intervention from us. We might need a little bit of speed brake here and there just to keep the speed in check. In terms of the terrain, there's no significant terrain around London. The MSA on the chart, 2200 feet out towards the northwest and 2100 feet out towards the east. Heading final 350, jet set 304, China, thank you. From there, we're going to be onto the RLS. We're going to fly the Cat 2 slash 3 RLS for runway 27 right today. Again, plenty of weather around, quite a lot of heavy rain, so that's really going to potentially reduce visibility on the approach. As you can see, the aircraft now descending, established on the VNAV path. That's going to have us flight level 200 at waypoint Tobit. We are just picking up a little bit of speed, so we'll keep an eye on that. Anyway, for the ILS itself, it's going to be 110.3, final approach course 269. That's checked against the PFD. Aerodrome elevation is 83 feet. Again, we're going down to the Cat 3B minima, so no minima. We'll set that up in just a moment's time. We need an RVR for that of 75 meters. We should be more than fine with that. Potentially, it's going to be Cat 1 conditions, but we're just covering off any heavy rain and making sure we do get the aircraft back on the ground at Heathrow. 
Transition level is by ATC, we'll call it 7000. And missed approach is climb straight ahead when passing 1580 or 0 DME off the RLS, whichever's later, climbing right turn up to 3000 feet, so missed approach altitude will be 3000. Speed's now looking good. Lastly, again, landing on 27 right, we'll vacate off to the left, probably coming off at Alpha 10 Echo, then on to Alpha and parking up at Terminal 5. In terms of our landing calculation, we have just updated things slightly with the weather. We're now looking at a wind of 275 at 27 knots, and we'll just update the aircraft weight here as well. So we're now looking at a required landing distance of around 6,700 feet, VREF of 151 and landing weight of 216 tonnes. Just bring the charts up once again. If the conditions are really bad, we might update that landing performance again. We'll see how we go. So, still looking good in terms of the VNAV path. Speed is good. For the landing itself, come onto the init ref page. It's going to be a flaps 25 landing. And we're going to add 5 to that, so 152 versus 151 that we calculated just a moment ago. We'll go with auto brake 2. We'll be using idle reverse, auto speed brakes. And in terms of our fuel state, Gatwick's the alternate. We need 6 tonnes for Gatwick. Now showing an arrival with 10.4, so an extra 4.4 tonnes. That is about an extra 40 minutes. Pretty close to what I planned. I planned on 50 minutes total, but we didn't get the tailwinds that we were expecting initially. Total air temperature minus 4 degrees, so definitely some potential for icing. We've got the anti-ice system selected through to auto. We'll take the seatbelt signs on a little bit early here as well, just in case things start to get a little bit bumpy. And we can get rid of these sun visors as well as we head back down into the weather. So in terms of the descent checks, We've already got the ATIS, the weather as discussed, we're looking at 270 degrees, 26 knots, straight down the runway, but fairly strong winds. Lots of showers in the area, as mentioned, q &H we've pre-selected, we're obviously now on hectopascals, and we've got a q &H pre-selected there of 1009, and again, temperature of around 16 degrees. So, altimeters are set, radios are set, MCP altitude is set. Localised frequency, once again, 110.3, course is 269. Anti-ice is set through to auto. Recall is checked, nothing for us there. Radio altimeter, we can set that up now, so we'll come on to radio. And no minima for us here today, so we'll just run that all the way down. One very minor gripe with the aircraft, as you can see, it's pretty slow here setting any minima. I believe the Barrow Minima defaults to 400 feet. If you want to set that down to 200, as you can see, it's going to take quite some time. Okay, so for the radio out, we've got no Minima selected. And just down through 20,000 feet, seatbelt signs are now on. It's coming slightly here on the range. They're just through flight level 200 there at Tobit. Again, the aircraft managing things very nicely. 150 now at waypoint Soppit. We've got about 5,000 feet to lose, 20 miles, so pretty much spot on. So right out is set, auto brake, again, auto brake 2 is set, approach briefing is complete. Holding the altimeters for now. And running through the descent checks, recall is checked. Notes have been checked, auto brake is set. Planning data again, lapse 25 and VREF of 152 with the minima. Not applicable here for the Cat 3. Approach briefing is complete, that is the descent checklist complete, and that is the setup complete. So for the time being, the aircraft continuing its way down to flight level 150, another 3,000 foot to lose there, maintaining 350 knots. So far the 777, and indeed its VNAV system, doing a really nice job throughout the flight. We'll continue here down the star, and pick things up again from Bovingdon as we fly the ILS onto 27 right. Midland 8865, London, good afternoon. Climb flight level 330. Climb flight level 330, Midland 8865, master cruise please, available. Cargo 410, route direct to Dover. Direct Dover now for uh, Polar uh, 410. 
Okay, so we are now just coming overhead Bovingdon, 7,000 feet or flight level 70, speed back at 220 knots. So again, the VNAV overall managing the aircraft very nicely. Did just require a little bit of intervention there with the speed brake to get the speed back as we came through 10,000 feet. We do now have cabin ready, and we've got flight level 70 again at the next waypoint, so we'll maintain that for the time being. Just adjusting our heading bug once again. So we'll stay on standard for now, we'll come on to the q &H as soon as we pass over the next waypoint. In terms of our descent checks, once again just waiting on the altimeters. Localizer and frequency. India Alpha Alpha is not actually the ILS we're looking for, 269. 12 miles currently from the field, we've got about another 50 miles outbound, about another 10 miles back. And showing 30 miles there in the box. 7,000 feet, 30 miles, everything looking very nice. We won't arm up the approach just yet, we'll wait until we're inbound on a reasonable heading. And for the time being here as well, happy to maintain 220 knots, we'll start slowing up towards 180 just before we come around the corner. And you can see we're now back at minimum clean speed, so we'll need some flat there as well as we slow down. London, good afternoon, speed 354, flight level 340. About another 5 miles to run now until the next descent point. Twist 354, London, no, roger. Now as well would be a pretty reasonable time to seat the cabin crew. As you can see, just busting in and out of the weather currently. In reality, it might have been slightly better to come in from the north to inset the RLS, but the weather radar in the sim always tends to overpaint pretty significantly. I think here we are just making use of the default weather radar. Though again, it's still nice to have. AB88, correction, Midland 8865, route direct to Autac. So about to come over DME 11 from Bovingdon. 6,000 feet is going to be the next restriction. Need to get the speed back to 180 knots as we approach that waypoint. And again then coming around the corner, we'll switch now onto our ILS chart. At the moment looking like we might get away with the weather actually, although we are back in the rain as we speak. We'll leave the wipers for now, we'll take those as we come down final approach. So we'll go flaps 1. Start bringing that speed back towards 180 knots. And sending now through 7,000 down to 6, so we'll go back onto the q &H. Got a q and of 1009. Set there on both sides. We'll come through to flaps 5 for a little bit more drag. And as well we need flaps 5 to get ourselves back towards 180. So rolling off that speed, we're just in speed intervene at the moment. Good London, United 915, flight level 280 for flight level 300. There's 185. Speed is slowly rolling off. And again, we might just take a little bit of speed brake to help. Berlin control, very good afternoon, to Janet 231. We're maintaining flight level 350 towards... Full speed brake, just momentarily. Janet 231, London, good afternoon. Redirect to Sithead. We're going to be making that turn very shortly. We want the speed back anyway for the turn. Just to make sure we don't overshoot in terms of the turn radius. Ryanair 5706, contact Maastricht, channel 132, decimal 205. Bye bye. So back through 200 knots, about another 5 miles now until we make that turn. 132, 205, Ryanair 5706, bye. In terms of our checklists, the approach checks, the altimeters, we've got QNH of 1009, they're both set. That is the approach checklist complete. Holding now for the landing checks. There's 5000, speed just about to come back onto target. United 915, climb level 360. Picking up the loke, we haven't got the glide slope just yet. And we now got the correct ident there as well, India Romeo Romeo. Climb flight level 340, United 915. Okay, there's 180, we'll get rid of the speed brakes. Good agent, that's 743, flight level 360. Hopefully we're done with those now, we'll just arm those up. Once we get the gear down. So you can see plenty of rain around as we come over London. Just going to be passing through a pretty big band of showers off the nose. Jet set, 743, flight level 360, approaching Gavant. Speed to good, shortly coming onto the localizer. As soon as we're through 90 degrees off that, we'll arm up the approach. And we do have the glide slope there now as well. The aircraft has managed things very nicely, such that hopefully we should just be able to hit approach. And more or less immediately we're going to see localizer capture and glide slope capture spot on there in terms of the profile. So 180 knots, 12 miles, that's pretty good. We'll maintain that until around 7 DME. Just holding the gear for now until we're down through about 8 miles. There is some slightly more intense rain that we're going to have to deal with 
as we come down the approach path. The heading there automatically seems to have been selected, 270 degrees, that's nice to see. And 10.8 miles now on the RLS DME, coming down through 3,000 feet. Everything looking pretty spot on. Might check, just losing a little bit of speed, so the thrust coming up to maintain that. Just making sure we do have those speed brakes stowed. Avoiding the worst of the weather there, just off to the north of the aircraft. Then we've got localizer capture. We should see glide slope capture in just a moment. Once we do, we'll set 3,000 feet for the missed approach. Through 9 miles. 600 feet, ground speed 150 knots. So we'll slowly trend back towards that glide slope. Desert 304 Charlie, resume our navigation direct to Deauville. Contact Brest, channel 133-635. Bye-bye. And just come down through 8 DME. Take the gear down. Actually, some pretty significant weather here over the field. In reality, we'd take a much closer look at that, but for the sake of the video here today, I think we're going to be able to get the aircraft in. Okay, there's glide slope. Polar cargo 410, descend now, flight level 310, route direct to Fabic. There's 3,000 foot set for the missed approach. Come through to flaps 15. And we'll start rolling that speed back towards 160. Again, 152, 151 now. It's going to be our V-Ref. Okay, uh, direct uh, out of 330 for 310 and uh, direct to what position, sir? Okay, it's 160 knots. We'll maintain that until around 4 DME, just coming through 7 miles. And we'll go flaps 20, all the way through to flaps 25. And now just waiting for flaps 25. The landing checklist, speed brake is armed. We'll take the runway terminal flights and the taxi lights on here as well. Flaps 25, that is the landing checklist complete. So the worst of that weather right down at the runway threshold, it might actually well be Cat 3 conditions here, we'll see how we go. Just approaching 5 miles, so we'll bring that speed back now towards 151. And down through 2500. We'll just hold the wipers a little bit longer, looks like we're just coming visual with the ground. But we definitely got another band of rain there between us and the field. As always, the weather in the UK never disappoints. Okay, Victor Alpha Bravo India Kilo, uh, Pol 410. We'll hold the auto thrust for now. I'm planning to take that out for the landing itself. So we're looking at around 57% there on the M1s. And we'll take those wipers on now. Pilot 410, what is your cruise mic number? It is worth noting if the animations don't look particularly stellar, some of that may well be that I'm running DLSS frame generation for the flight today. From what I can see, it doesn't look as though those wipers are clearing any of the precipitation in terms of the animation, which again we have seen from other add-ons at this point. Ryanair 2836, make your number decimal 80 all left. So at this point as well, we definitely want to know what the RVRs are, since we're planning on the Cat 3B landing. Again, we need 75 metres, I think we said, based on the charts. 75 metres. As checked, we are stable. In terms of a Cat 1 landing, we'd be looking at around 200 feet. So we'll keep an eye on the rad out there, see whether or not we would have got in on a Cat 1 approach. Yeah, it looks like 58 on the M1's going to do us. We'll take the auto throttles out. Flight Air 234 Zulu, London and Roger. Climb flight level 350. Just want to get in a little bit of manual flying. And also it's easier to do it this way in terms of hardware. Just losing a little bit of speed, so bring in some thrust. Still not visual with the runway, so it looks like the Cat 3 was definitely a good call. Getting a little bit of sync here as well, losing all that speed. Aircraft though, very nicely planted here on the low and the glide slope. 500 feet. Back on target for the speed, so back towards 57 cents. Portion there for the auto throttle disconnect. Showing slightly higher there now on the glide, not ideal in these conditions. And speed picking up there as well. Okay, we are visual with the lights. So overall, the aircraft has a song, low con glide slope. Disconnect the autopilot. 
just slightly low there on the Pappy. 150. Okay, back on profile. 30. 20. 10. Off the thrust levers. There's touchdown, we'll go full reverse. It's obviously a heavily contaminated runway. So we've got rev green, speed rolling off. And again, we'll look to vacate. We'll probably take the second left exit here just to avoid jamming on the brakes. So manual braking. And down through 70 knots, we'll cancel the reverses. Okay, off to the left. So there you go guys, I do hope you enjoyed our outing in the PMDG 777-300ER. PMDG never really disappoint with their releases, the 777 is certainly no exception to that rule. As usual though, I'll just break down the aircraft in terms of various categories and let you know what I think of the add-on. As always, starting with the modelling and texturing. Whilst I'm certainly no rivet counter, the external modelling of the aircraft seems pretty spot on. Internally as well, I think the cockpit is modelled very nicely, always a bit of a forte of PMDGs. Texturing externally again looks really good, the aircraft does look very photorealistic, nice PBR materials used throughout. Internally again whilst very good, generally I find the PMDG aircraft just look that little bit less photorealistic in the cockpit. Some of the textures have that slightly more painted aesthetic as opposed to photorealistic looking materials. Similarly, there are a couple of areas, for example the woolen covering on the seats, which, whilst it has been modelled in very exacting detail, just doesn't look quite true to life. Of course though, I'm definitely nitpicking with such details, and overall the 777 visually does look really nice. I won't cover the texturing and the modelling in too much depth, since hopefully you'll have had a good chance to see both of those for yourself throughout the flight. As far as the flight modelling goes, once again, generally a very nice job done by PMDG. Whilst I haven't flown the 777 myself in the real world, I have had a brief opportunity to fly the aircraft in a full level D sim. I do also have some wide body experience, so at least some sense of how the aircraft should fly. All I really recall from my time in the 777 sim was that it was a really pleasant aircraft to have fly, particularly during the landing. And that certainly comes across with the PMDG 777, it was pretty easy to get a greaser out of the aircraft. Just a few minor gripes with the flight model, although again they may be true to life, but it seemed as though the nose wheel steering was perhaps a little bit unresponsive. I needed a little bit of braking to get around some of the tighter turns, which I imagine wouldn't be accurate. As well, the aircraft felt pretty direct on the controls at times, perhaps a little bit more so than would be realistic, but fairly typical of what we usually see within Microsoft Flight Simulator. The aircraft very much reminds me of a bigger version of the PMDG 737, so that will hopefully give you some sense of the flight model if you are familiar with the PMDG 737 family. As always with PMDG add-ons, again not being a 777 pilot, but the aircraft does seem to perform pretty well to the numbers. We saw that for example with the fuel burn, I planned on 50 minutes for arrival. We arrived with about 40 with some variations in the winds and the temperatures en route. Similarly with aircraft systems, pretty much right up there with the very best. It is worth noting there are no modelled circuit breakers, which we do see from a lot of top tier add-ons these days. That being said, it is pretty rare to actuate any circuit breakers in a real world aircraft. And the PMDG 777 does come with a comprehensive set of failures, so to my mind I would still consider the aircraft to be fully study level. System depth, as you've hopefully seen throughout the flight, is fully comprehensive when it comes to normal operations. And as far as abnormal operations go, again, there is a full failure system, as well as a working ICAS system with normal and non-normal checklists. 
In terms of the add-on and its operation, everything definitely has a real feeling of quality to it. Sounds on the aircraft again, generally very good. As I mentioned during the startup, I think the PMDG have done a really nice job of capturing that really distinctive howl of the G90 as it spools up. Generally speaking, the engine sounds are really nice, particularly during the takeoff, as well all of the cockpit controls and switches, as you would expect from PMDG, all fully modelled, including sounds. For the external sounds, as again we often see within Microsoft Flight Simulator, the engines are lacking a little bit of roar. And during the cruise, for example, you can still hear the wind noise over the engine noise. So far as extras included with the product go, very good overall. We do, of course, again have the onboard tablet included with Simbrief and Navigraph integration. As well, the extensive range of custom ground equipment, which is fairly unique to PMDG add-ons, a really nice feature to have in the sim particularly for users of the aircraft who don't own, for example, GSX. As well now, we also have modelled and operable doors and windows, which is great. That also allows easier access to the cabin. The tablet is very functional. And again, you have all of the features that you'd need for a typical flight. The way they work, the way they operate has been quite nicely thought through. So once again, overall, a very strong additional feature set with the product. The included documentation, as best I can tell, is really more of a tutorial series, both for flying the jet and as well operating the tablet. What you do get there in terms of a tutorial is very comprehensive, so certainly lots of detail there in terms of flying the aircraft, you'll certainly get up to speed with what's provided. As always though, with a quote-unquote study level add-on, it is always nice to be provided with the real-world FCOMs or real-world QRH. I believe that PMDG used to do this, but I know that there are now some licensing issues with such materials. Nevertheless, it would be nice if they could produce their own analogous versions. Though in fairness, the tutorials alongside the onboard tablet as well as the built-in ICAST checklists do give the user everything they need in terms of data and guidance for flying and operating the 777. Lastly, in terms of the aircraft FPS, much like the PMDG 737, the 777 is overall a pretty frame rate friendly option for the sim. I was getting about 35 FPS with the aircraft versus around 50 under the same conditions with the default Cessna 152. Worth noting whilst that is a pretty low figure that was with Inibuild's London Heathrow which is particularly heavy on the frame rates as well a full selection of AI traffic. In summary then, once again PMDG have produced an absolutely stellar product here with the 777. In most respects, the aircraft doesn't necessarily break any new ground within Microsoft Flight Simulator. There is, of course, one big caveat to that, and that is that this is the first truly study-level long-haul airliner that we have available within Microsoft Flight Simulator. As a result, the product certainly offers up something quite unique. As I'm sure that many of you know, I typically compile a list of the best Microsoft Flight Simulator add-ons available on an annual basis, and without a doubt, at the moment, the 777 is worthy of a spot on that list. All in all, I really liked the jet, I'll certainly be flying it again, and as I say, it is another very strong offering from PMDG within the sim. Once again, I do hope you enjoyed the flight and found the video to be of use. If you did, please consider giving the video a like. If you want to see more content from the channel as well, then please consider subscribing. And if you would like to help support my content further, you can do so by becoming a channel member or patron. I'll leave a link to both of those down in the video description below. Once more, a very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support, and a big thank you as well to PMDG for letting us take a look at their 777. To all of you, I do hope you are having a great day wherever you are, take really good care, and I will see you all again soon.